I like in this, yeah, you can see my lazy sweatpants and we can get into it. Let's rap, kids. Pose. <laughs> <laughs> so, Word. I know uh, you were looking forward to uh, Dune was supposed to come out this month, right? It was. Yeah. And I am very sad. Oh, no, no, I can cheer you up big time. Like, this is called Brad Ruins Rob oh, Day. I'm going to cheer up. Do tell. Oh, oh, because there is a Dune that's out. Dune Drifter. Because the Mockbusters are all still getting released. Do they still make money if there's no actual Blockbuster release to piggyback off of? That's even better because it'll make it, like, you'll be cruising the video store and you'll be like, my god, it did finally get released. Because a lot of stuff is going direct to streaming. Oh, so, so they just straight up want to, well, I mean, they're always about scamming people, but <laughs> this time it, it, it's like, uh, uh. Okay. Well, let me let me go ahead and show you the trailer first for Dune Drifter. Okay, so I would... you know, I gotta say, I didn't think the remake of Space Mutiny was gonna be that good, but this is kind of impressing me. Honestly, I like. I'm not gonna like. This movie is actually really good. <laughs> I, so here's the funny thing. I was looking. I, I'm looking at this trailer. Yeah. And I say this in all seriousness because I'm a huge Dune fan. Yeah. Those are better better special effects than the sci-fi miniseries Dune had. The first one, Children of Dune, actually was pretty hot shit. But that that first one was pretty low budget. A lot yeah. of it was just shot on sound stages. These effects are better than that. That was 2001, I think, that yeah. came out, so... Wait you I'm see. actually sli I'm not gonna lie, I'm slightly impressed. I was expecting something way more low budget. You wait till you see what the cinematography is like. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is Brad. Shot on, on location in New Zealand, like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> this is Brad confuses Rob's day. <laughs> yeah, I'm very confused. So if I had showed you some, just some still shots of this, and told you this is from the new Dune, would you not pick up right away that I'm lying? <laughs> with some I'd, of those I'd establishing actually, shots? Uh, with those establishing shots, I'd believe it, because yeah. the new Dune looks, I love his work, and I like to play Dune 2049, but it, it looks a little sparse. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm hoping there's actually a little more than kind of what we saw in the trailers, but I... Fuck. Now I, I should. So I should. I kind of. I kind of believe it. Like. Yeah. Just, but I, I mean, I, I'd pick up on it if I saw that whole trailer really oh, quick. Oh, like, yeah. Okay, this isn't dude, but I'm kind of slightly impressed. What the fuck is this? I so I showed you that box cover earlier just mm -hmm. to kind of set it up with shits and giggles and everything. Like you know, Dune's not out, but this one is. Look at what the original poster for the movie is like. Where it that is better than a majority of posters I see in movie theaters. <laughs> but like the, it's definitely photoshopped. But I mean, it's it's better than you know, like if this were some of the other ones. <laughs> yeah, if this were a movie that were bigger budget out in theaters, you know, it would be a poster like the main actor with a white background, like yeah. Passengers or something like that. And they honestly do a lot of throwbacks to a lot of different styles. Like at the beginning of the movie where there's this uh, battle up in space, they use a lot of rear, mm -hmm. rear projectors behind them. And it, it's actually kind of cool looking. It's a good throwback. And when there are explosions that happen throughout the movie, there's really an explosion going off behind this guy. <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> no, I. You know what? I do because I've seen a you know lot. What? Of... Maybe I do. This is 2020. Everything's in verse. Yeah, we've got Hollywood falling apart, and then the mockbusters rise. Yes. Yeah, the so the, and now I've seen it before, where uh, I've seen enough mockbusters to mm -hmm. where there are some good ones, and and ones like this that. You can tell that this is made by some, a guy named Mark Price wrote and directed this movie, and you can tell he's one one of those guys that like I know what my job here is. This is going to be a mockbuster. Dune's coming out. This is called Dune Drifter. You know what? I actually really do want to make a really good movie. <laughs> I mean, it, it happens. Uh, you know, maybe he's a Dune fan too, and he's like, this is as close to directing a Dune movie I'm ever going to get. You know, may as well. <laughs> yeah, that that happens. A bulk of the movie is she's stranded on this planet. She mm -hmm. needs a part from another ship that is also crashed on there that's an alien ship. Types that if you showed there. me the best parts of that trailer, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily think it's Dune. Oh. But I, I would almost think it's something like, oh, this is like a pitch black kind of movie. 
A little, like, like, like lower budget, but like a, a lower budget sci-fi thing. Like I'd, I'd almost believe you could release this in a theater. Yo, it it does look like something that could um, be in a theater. It it, it, it went mainly when they. If you show on the, the best parts, yeah. There's there's a few uh, there's a few things I saw in that trailer already. We're like, hmm. Yeah, but but, what, but when it gets to them being on the planet, which is about mm. twenty minutes into the movie, it's about a ninety minute film. Even when there is, because because there's cheesy CG in this movie, but right. even when there is. It's in a shot that still looks good. So her and her and another pilot crash, and the other one is like mortally wounded. So she has to go out onto this planet where she sets up this like future tent. It's actually kind of cool. I really like this shot. Distress signal activated. Generating hard light holographic life raft. Holographic life raft. <laughs> All right, that was a giveaway. Yeah, <laughs> I was like that effect wasn't good, but but it was in a but shot that was the, good. Yeah, the shot was really good. Yeah, like I feel like that. That I was like that looked like it came from a real movie, and that was the temp effect. Yeah, like well, once it's fully rendered, this is gonna look great. But this this is just our generic, like you know, this is what this effect is gonna kind of look like. And effects like that are pretty far few in between in the movie, mm -hmm. and even when there are some. There's enough tension throughout the scene that you kind of go along with it. Even when one thing that the movie does really well is when someone gets injured or hurt, they really linger on it. When there's this ba that battle going up in space, and so it's like it's, a survival story. It is when there's the battle going up in space, and it's I mean you remember Star Wars when the fighters are blowing up and they're oh, ah, yeah. they scream and everything. In this, it lingers on it quite a bit. There's the woman who's injured on the planet mm -hmm. with her. It stays on her to where mm -hmm. she is like struggling, and the acting on the part of these these two in the movie is is really good. Like it gets to the point where she grabs a gun from her and wants her to straight up just shoot sure. her in the head. It does get creepy when the it, mm -hmm. the the girl she's with is mortally wounded. She does end up dying. But there's parts they do with her body later on where you don't exactly know at this point what type of being she's up against. So some kind of creepy stuff happens here. Uh, the, the ship that uh, came down last night isn't one of ours. Um, I think there's some survivors out them on the, the, the comms, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm like at that point you don't know like what this thing she's fighting against. You don't really know mm -hmm. if like can it take over this dead person? Is this per is something going to come out of this person? Is this person going to stand up? And that's that isn't what happens. So far this it, is a lot better than Alien Covenant. I'm not going to lie. It is. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> dude, this movie is better than 80% of the Alien movies. There is even like I kind of like it when like you saw the tent that was set mm. up earlier. I actually like the few parts where it gets kind of Blair Witchy, where she's in this tent and something is on the other side beating at it and okay, trying to so crawl its this way movie inside. Good. Like, yeah. Is it, no. it, but is is it like a hidden gem where they yeah. accidentally made something that it's like no actually I this actually this. is really good. Honestly, this is one of the best sci-fi movies I've seen this year. It does get it at its best when they land. In the first 20 minutes when there's all the fight. Well, I'll, I'll say I'll this. Get, I'll I get, know I'll get going in that it's a mockbuster, so maybe yeah. going into that you you lower your standards a bit. Well, I'll I'll get to some stuff in the opening in a little bit. But right away, here, I'll show you more of the cinematography in the film. If you found my body, I want my mum. Uh, I want you to know that I tried. <laughs> <laughs> where did they shoot? Is this a volcanic field? I don't know. I don't I'm very know where curious. they shot this. Yeah, I'm very curious of it. That Even the music is it's like... It's hard. It... Yeah, that looks like... It looks like it's somewhere near a volcano. Like, it's got that... The music is like, it. I should be watching this in a theater. Like, it looks theatrical. Yeah, oh. no. This... <laughs> <laughs> and you promised you were gonna ruin my day. This has not, in fact, ruined my day. So I was curious where, like, what the aliens were gonna look like in this, mm -hmm. and 
when they do show up, they are, uh, it's not like a CG creature or anything like that. You can tell it's a guy in, like, mm -hmm. riot gear outfit or, like, a SWAT suit I or made a mistake. Like I would have made the humans, or I would have made the aliens all human. Like, you don't see the alien inside the humans. Oh, I'll like, get to the inside of it in a sec. But, like, the movie's so good at tension that it's like on Star Trek where it's like, all right, I mean, you know that's a guy in an outfit or yeah. something like that. But it's so good at editing, music, pacing, story that I'm going along with it that this is some creature that yeah. she's fighting. The only thing that's ever convinced me it's not a guy in the suit is the Star Wars Christmas special, so. <laughs> it was the mascara <laughs> on Mala that really, that really gave it away. Yeah. Here's where it first shows up in it. So I'm not gonna uh, I'm not hmm. gonna lie that did make me jump when I was watching this. Oh really? <laughs> it, it did. Like, I guess maybe because you told me it was coming, I just no, and and I didn't. When you're actually watching the movie and you've had a lot of setup where she's kind of like the previous clip mm -hmm. that I showed you with all the cinematography and everything, and she's just kind of walking along and then that happens. But what's great is how much the rest of this movie is her messing up these things. <laughs> oh. Wow, malicious. Oh, it keeps going. I brought you the cure for cancer, no! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, here, I'll show you this here in a sec. Uh, that's, so the rest of the movie is mm -hmm these things kind of keep popping out or they'll keep popping back up and she's relentless in just destroying these. Like she'll either shoot one about a dozen times like she just did, or she'll run up on one on this just with a knife. Let their alien gods sort them out. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, have you been helped, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> and there's other, so there's other things on this planet that also screw with her. Like, I, you know, I, I actually mm -hmm. do really like that when she's outside, she does have a helmet on. Like, it's not that usual thing you see where coincidentally there's oxygen on this planet. Right. So anytime she is outdoors, she has to have her helmet on and she oh, has to nice. tape up her suit quite a bit. And there's all this steam that's underneath uh, the surface. And there's a few points uh, earlier on where one will just kind of shoot this mm -hmm. rock up at her, these rocks that she suddenly has to dodge to keep her suit from getting torn or to get, or to even like probably knock her head off or something. <laughs> and then when it's the part in the movie where she's fighting against these different creatures, she starts using mm -hmm. that to her benefit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was alien for what's your fucking problem, lady? <laughs> or goodness gracious me. <laughs> I don't think they're going to let us in, Art. <laughs> don't worry, the riot people will return, and in greater numbers. <laughs> I'll show you this, where it becomes sort of, it goes into like, Hills Have Eyes territory. Oh where god! She, she uses her dead friend as a decoy. Oh god! To again, like, mess this alien up. <laughs> <laughs> Though I'll get into what, and I, I don't put this on the writer and director at all, but the movie does start with one of my least favorite uh, 
like cliche. She crashes on the planet, is horrifically injured. I'll bet you're wondering how I got here. No, two weeks there's earlier. No, no narration, but I'll I'll show you this real quick. Okay, so you see that there. Yeah. That is literally the opening seconds of the movie. The movie opens on that. And then not long after, it flashes the title Dune Drifter and then goes 23 minutes earlier. And that is never... So I was half right. No, yeah, you were. And like a movie always has an uphill battle for me after that. But in this particular case, yeah. I'm like, the rest of it is paced so well that I'm like, I know that this was not in the script. That is not the director or writer that wanted to do that. That is always. It's funny, I have so grown to hate that cliche. Yeah. Of like, bet you're wondering how I got here, or a few days or whatever, that I had forgotten. I was watching with my uh, uh, niece. Mm hmm. I forgot that that movie opens with that cliche where yeah. you're like, Remy busts out and it's like, bet you're wondering how I got here or something yeah. to that effect. I'm like, oh God, I forgot this even. I'm like, well, back then it wasn't as like overused as I was like, that was like mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. I'm like, now I feel like I've seen it everywhere. But even then oh, I'm just yeah. like, and that's one of my favorite Pixar films. I'm like, man, that just took this movie down a little notch for me. <laughs> I know. You're like, I... I see it, you mostly see it in January, because it's mm -hmm. in every January action movie, or sometimes horror movie, and it is never, unless it is done for a reason, stylistically, yeah. or it factors into Well, I knew the Sonic like, movie was going to be garbage when it opened up, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh god. This, this is like, this is the distributor that did this, or someone who, yeah. or, or some they want, they wanted. Go. They want their hook. Yeah. You gotta have that hook. If your screenplay doesn't have a hook, oh, they'll just toss Plus, it. Plus, it ruins what, because the rest of it is kind of, they find this wormhole they're going through, a lot of pretty cool, like, retro, like, rear projection mm -hmm. stuff going on. But because they put that in the opening, you know what's on the other side of this tunnel that they're going through. Right. And when you see, when they finally get to the other side, they're all reacting in surprise and horror about this sneak attack that's happened. I'm like, you just ruined this by putting it in the opening moments of the film. But again, the movie does make up for that, especially when she when she crashes and everything that happens afterwards. And I, I don't put that on the writer or director So how much actual dune drifting is there? I was wondering if this was a case of this movie was originally called something else and they retitled it Dune Drifter to, to capitalize on Dune. Because I've seen yeah. that happen before. I couldn't find anything that said that. And in the movie, their squadron is called, like, the Dune Squadron. I, I mean, so the like aliens... That. Vaguely remind me kind of kind of like the Harkonnens or the Sadakar from Dune with their yeah. with their outfits. Um, so, or like the still suits maybe. And yeah. So I I don't know. I could kind of see it. Like. Yeah, you would know um, more than me. I, more I could than see me. it, but I mean, it's every well. And the other thing is, it looks like a desolate planet without a lot of water or something. Oh it yeah. Just it just looks like this yeah. giant volcanic field. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd believe it. Yeah. But I just want to know, is, is there drifting? Actual doom drifting? I didn't see any drifting in the movie. God damn it. <laughs> so she, was, she wasn't in some jacked up Japanese car, like, flinging around going, like, like Tokyo drifting in the middle Maybe of Maybe that's in the, there, there is a Fast and the Furious <laughs> knockoff that with, with nice. DMX that was released a few months ago. So Doom drifting. Where do Fast you, and Furious. <laughs> where do you rank this one? I, for ruining my day. I know, right? It's uh, a fucking zero. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah. The, the, the fact that they may be cheating Dune fans, like trying to scam uh -huh. them. All right, I'll give it a one. Yeah. One out of ten. But this this actually looks like... You should watch yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, one really one out of ten this. means it's actually legit might be good. I know, yeah. <laughs> you this know. is the only review show that goes Because if it was by. supposed to ruin my day, a ten out of a ten means, you know, I'm going to contemplate suicide, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is the only. This is the uh, the only. Which that ride. was deck the halls, by the way. I saw you reference that. In oh, your recent we're Scrooge, one yeah. Of the biggest pieces of shit. I, I'm just like, wow, yeah. God, this is like watching a Holocaust movie. <laughs> it's just, you just feel awful yeah. after you're done with that film. Mm -hmm. That would be like a ten out of ten, but no, not not this. This this is only like a one out of ten. It's a review show that goes by head. golf scores. Oh, here, I'll I'll bump it up for you a little bit before we take off. Here you go. 
<laughs> it's a singing cat shirt. You come into my house <laughs> and you pull that kind of shit. Get out. <laughs>